Next thing we're going to do is set up the Arduino here. So in the little kit that you ordered, the Gerbil Shield kit, it should come with the actual shield, some stepper drivers. We only need three of them, so I left the fourth one. Oh, it's over there in a package. The Uno, a uselessly short cable, and then be careful not to throw away the jumpers. So this one, the jumpers are taped onto this uh, Uno package. So make sure not to throw these away. Okay, these jumpers are very important to what we're doing. Okay. So I will eventually have a class on, or a tutorial series on just the Gerbil side of all this. The Gerbil side, how to set it up, how to set all these. But right now you're just gonna follow me Follow along with me exactly as I do it, okay? So, we got the shield here. It needs a few things, okay? So, one thing, if you look at it, it says in the corners here. I'll, I'll try to zoom it in. There we go, okay? It says X, Y, Z and A, okay? Now we have three separate motors we're trying to run, but we don't have a Z axis, so we're not actually gonna be putting a driver on this. The A axis over here is sort of designed for rotary axis, but we're gonna be using it to mirror our Y axis, so everything we tell Y to do, A is gonna do, and that can be done over here, okay? So to mirror that, you go you look on the left side here, it says X, Y, Z, and A, or D12. Along the Y, we're going to put a jumper along the blue ones and along the yellow ones. So I'm going to do that here. Okay, I'm opening up my bag. I guess I'm ripping it open. Cool. I'm going to take a jumper here. And so this one, I'm going to put along the y-axis blue and there we go you guys see that so x is the top one the y the blue one has a jumper going across i'm going to do the same thing with the yellow here there we go okay now the yellow also has its own jumper going across those two pins so now now this is a step and direction here, okay? So that means any step and direction signal that Y is getting, A is also gonna get. So it's gonna get the exact same thing here, okay? Next thing we need to do is load up our, our micro stepping pins. We're gonna fully load them. So what I, we could do is every time we pulse the stepper driver, to turn the motor, it moves at one step, right? What I can do is divide that so it can actually be one sixteenth of a step so we get much finer resolution. And that's what we'll be doing here. So I'm going to start with X here. All three of these sets of jumpers need a jumper going from top to bottom here in this area here. So I'll put the first one on. There we go. So there's one, right? Jumping the top pin here to the bottom pin here. And I'm gonna do that, looks like eight more times. So I gotta get this one and this one. So there's all three of those. There's all three of these for the Y, and now I need to do all three for A. All right, there we go. So I got jumpers going across the Y for mirroring the A axis to the Y axis, and I got all the micro stepper jumpers going. 
Okay. So once we got that, we have to install the actual stepper drivers. So they come with these tiny little heat sinks. Do make sure to install those, okay? They're kind of important. Now it's a black chip on here on these little drivers that actually gets warm. And if we center the heat sink on that black chip, we're gonna be getting pretty close to these pins here on the side. We don't wanna do that. So even though the chip is a little bit to the left here, we want the the heat sink to be centered along this. Okay. Now I'm going to be installing this uh, this direction right here. So my heat sinks I'm going to want are going to be installed like this, right? So I'm going to want the heat sinks going vertical because that's the way heat goes, right? Heat raises. So if I do it vertical, the heat from up top can pull air from bottom. Like on this small of a scale, it won't really matter. But you typically want your heat sinks vertical so that hot air lifts up while pulling cool air to the bottom so it makes a natural airflow. So again, centered on the red board, not on the black chip. All right, there we go. So there's all three of them. Now, these can be installed this way, right? Or I can turn them around and install them. It's kind of tricky, like... I've seen boards where it's female and male on this side, and the female and male, so you can't, like, mix it up. But these ones you can mess up. What you have to do is look at the bottom here and read. So my enable pin is this one down here. It says enable. It's got a little line above it. I have to take that pin, and if I look really close to my board, these jumpers here, the yellow ones and the red ones, I can look up in the corner and it says EN up in here, okay? That EN means enable. So EN, EN. What I want to do is line up my enable pin on this stepper driver here to that pin on the board, okay? There we go. So looks like with the red one, the trim pot is on bottom at this orientation with the stepper enable being up top. So enable, I like to check each one. You can literally uh, smoke these things if you do this wrong. You'll fry these things, they'll get hot, it won't move. And then I've seen little flames spew out of them. I've seen smoke come out. So make sure to do this right. Make sure to line up your enable pin with the enable pin on the board, okay? There we go. Oh, <laughs> missed. That's a Z-axis. There we go. A-axis. Cool. All right. All right, so the shield is set up. Now we got to install the Arduino here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out. Come up a little. Zoom out. So... I did a design issue, like I designed it wrong, so I had to fix it by hand manually. By the time you guys start using this, the design issue will be fixed, and you won't have that. I had the Arduino always be next to this rail, if the rail exists. And so if it's huge, then it's very far away from the little plug here, the little panel pass-through, which I didn't like. I thought that was kind of a bad design idea. So... What I did with the newest one is made sure the Arduino's next to the plug. Because the plug, there's not much noise out of it. The power supply over here has a little bit of noise, but it should be far enough away. The fans make a bit of electrical noise. So I wanted it away from the fans. So it should be in a pretty electrically quiet spot right there. 
So what I'm going to do on mine is I'm going to run M3 screws into these holes and a standoff. I'm going to use, uh, I guess I'll use a spacer. I'll use an M3 spacer for these. And I got my spacers all mixed up, so this might take me a second. There's one. I thought I bought more spacers, and I just poured them in there. There's these, there's these weird little M3 caps that are kind of useless. I don't really know what they're used for. Hopefully somebody can comment and explain what they're for. But okay, there we go. There's three or four M3 spacers. They space it five millimeters out. Okay. Got those. And then I'm going to use four 10 millimeter. I guess I'll use two. That's right. Two 10 millimeter uh, M3 brass standoffs. Okay. And then I'm going to need two nuts. And let's see. This is uh, three or six mil. So I'm going to do a 10 millimeter screw to get through it. Pull some of those out. Well, I guess I'll need longer than that. So it's going through six millimeter washer on each side. So that's seven millimeters. And then it's going through the board, which is about another millimeter. So it's going eight millimeters. And then it's got to capture a nut or a standoff. So let's go with 14. M3 by 14 millimeter on all four of those. That should work. So here I go. So M3 by 14. Let's make sure that I choose the right holes. So I start drilling, right, with the Arduino like this. And then I remember that the Arduino is actually mounted like this on the inside. So I got to, you know, ugly up my case even more. So now it's got all these holes. Not like it matters, but makes me feel silly. <laughs> Not a big deal. Okay. Then we got this one. And then we got the two top ones here. And because this is going to be awkward, I'm going to tape them down. Little tab for pulling it off. There we go. Those are taped. Now, you don't need to do this. If you can finesse these in here, which I usually can, just not while taking a video of it and <laughs> trying to stay out of the video's way. Not that I've done a good job of staying out of the video's way, but still, I'd have this thing, like, tilted and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, so now that that's there, the top ones are, sorry, i got to put the standoffs, the spacers on there. Okay, the top ones are going to have a nut go through them, All right? So these top holes are going to have nuts go through them. The bottom holes are going to have standoffs go through them. Okay. And I drilled this by hand, so of course it's not perfect. Oh, that's not too far off. <laughs> Cool, okay. So now that this Arduino's on here, now I'm gonna put an M3, I guess I'll pull this off a little bit. Okay, M3 uh, nut up top.
And one more up top. Okay, now bottom, I'm going to use brass standoffs. <laughs> I guess I'll throw my, my driver while I'm at it. That's pretty good, and then I'm gonna do the brass standoff on the last one here. Okay, it's having problems catching. That's all right. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll convince it to catch. Oh, it's not a. Uh, it's not long enough. <laughs> okay, well that'll be fun. Okay, so I'll show you a little trick to the, getting this one out. So I'm gonna grab the M3 by 14, right, the right length. Put a washer on it. Now I've got the standoff in there, just floating, which I don't want to lose. Okay, so. I'm going to push the Arduino against the plastic, pull that one out, and put this one in. Okay, here I go. And my screw didn't drop. Party. Oh. I'm also using the wrong driver bit. Just realized. All right, that's in there, cool. Okay, so we got the Arduino mounted. And then I'm gonna plug mine in. I like to curl it so it holds the cable flat. And make sure the cable hangs out in the slot there. That way it doesn't leave cables jumping around everywhere. Okay, got the Arduino plugged in. Okay. And now the shield. All right, the shield only fits one way. Fits like this here. Okay, right, so here I go with that. Okay, shield's on. And last thing I have to do now is lightly screw in to these uh, these brass standoffs. So I'm going to get some M3 by 6 and just go straight into these.
Okay, that one's not even like screwed down all the way, but that's all right. It's holding there. It's actually scraping against the the Z-axis standoffs, uh, separate driver standoffs. And this side just wants to be difficult. <laughs> There we go. All right. There we go. Okay, so now we have the Arduino mounted, stood off just a little bit. If you don't have standoffs like those, uh, you kind of got to be careful here. Like, you can use M3 like nuts, but you don't want to ground anything out. And there's pins over here on this side. You don't want to ground the pins out with your, your nuts here. So be really conscious of that, right? There's lots of different spacers out there. Uh, yeah, so make sure as you're doing this not to ground any pins out if you're doing it a different way than I did. So there's the Arduino mounted with the Gerbil Shield. Thanks for watching.